before my lifetime is up, I know you know a lot of science people, and that's the correct term. We got to scientists, t- yeah, yeah, science right. people. We need, we, need, <laughs> we, need, we really just need teleportation because I'm. Oh, you know how? Oh, ooh, oh, oh, we got it. We, we got already it. got it. Oh, wait, hang on. <laughs> <laughs> teleportation. I cannot begin to tell you how game changing that would be. Oh, I've, I'm, okay? I'm on board, but but it's not teleportation you're after. Yes, it is. No, I'll tell you why not. <laughs> I'll tell you why not. Okay. Okay. You think it's teleportation because they do that in the movies. I love movies. What you really want is the power to open a wormhole anytime in any place. Yes. Okay. So, <laughs> yes. for example, on Star Trek, they go into the transporters and they beam somewhere. Yeah. If they had Rick's power of portal, they just open a portal, step through, and you are where you need to be. You're not tr- teleported. Yeah. You just step through a wormhole. Those are wormholes, by the way. These these portals that the green the green yeah. thing and the sparkly. They're basically wormholes. So, wait a minute. I, I, I tell you this. I was in Charlotte Airport, North Carolina, and I had to go from a big plane to a little plane. And that it, I, and I, my luggage. I forgot why I didn't have wheels. It was like carry on, but not so big that it had wheels. It was like <laughs> small carry, and I had to lug this i swear i walked like three miles it might have just been like a mile to go to the small plane and i get to the small plane and this is early twitter when it was not yet a successful <laughs> and i said let me be clever and geeky at the same time on twitter so i tweeted and i said i can't wait to the future when we have wormholes at that point all gates will be adjacent to one another i said yeah I just geeked that one. Okay. Yeah, that, yeah. Okay. Now, however geeky you are, there's always someone geekier than you. Okay. Just Been let that, that be. Years. Putting that out uh, there. Uh, put it out there. I've got a back tattoo of that. A rule <laughs> of the universe. Lower back. Just check. Um, I'll well, see I'll you show, tonight at the sleepover. Yeah, I'll show you yeah. later. Okay. So <laughs> Next to the warm milk. <laughs> so someone tweets back and said, Dr. Tyson, the day we have wormholes, you won't need airports. <laughs> Oh, you just got out geek. Oh, that was Geek Squad. That was they, they oh, up on you. I oh oh my gosh. And there it is. I so just think about it. The day you can do that, there are no airports. Yeah, there are no roads. There is no transportation. You don't need your twelve lane four hundred five freeway. Yeah. Okay. It's out. I'm pulling out my Ford stock <laughs> because wherever you are, you just walk through the portal, and you're there. Exactly. Imagine the back of your refrigerator connected to the grocer. Well, just, oh, wow. no, the I, grocer peaks, oh, you're low on milk. They swap out, put in a new milk. They, and you, you just have a standing order for supplies. No one, It would get rid of trucks, Yeah. Uh, um, uh, pollution, the gas, gasoline. You have to hang out with people you don't want to so much more often because there's I, no excuses. Oh, just walk Oh, through. my oh, car just, broke down. Uh, <laughs> oh, gosh. Can, can you come tired. over for dinner? No, I'm from the city. You can't say your car broke down. Oh, that's yeah, true. it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah I, so well, just think of the future of teleportation. Uh, that's a game changer. Look how much real estate would be given back to people when you give up the total acreage of freeways. Yeah. That, that uh, spaghetti through Los Angeles as the prime example of this. Do you no. think, can we at least have, are we at least 0.001% there? For teleportation? No. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, wormholes are unstable, and okay, you need well, sort of negative matter. So are to my open exes, but we figured it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we... Not everything in the movie is real. Just okay, so fine. Well, I saw an interesting video basically explaining what you just explained how there would be no more roads, no more trucks, no more need for all of this. Um, and they were talking about how you have to, technology like that, that is so revolutionary, you have to like gradually. Um, you know, implement it into society. So it starts off maybe like it's only for governmental use. And then they're like, okay, now we can go commercial with it, but it's extremely expensive, you know? And so only like the 0.1% have it. And then slowly, it, but surely it gets implemented into society until, um, so that our economies have time to adjust to it. Cause like if they just came out with it tomorrow, it would collapse, you know, the, the automotive industry, hotels and travel and stuff like that. Yeah, so you're right. However, um, it's not they, that they would do that on purpose. It's just the natural evolution of a new technology. Okay. The new technology, does it work in every case? Let's test it. In yeah. some, so, for example, the self-driving car, electric car, how, 
how does that, tra- how, do, how does you transition? Well, we already have uh, um, the express lanes or HOV lanes, whatever they call them here, where you have extra people yeah. in the car, you yeah. get access. You already have those lanes. Make those just self-driving car lanes. And I think you, that's, that's be the how you would step. start there. Yeah. And there I am stuck in traffic and these go, they're whizzing by at 100 miles an hour. My next car is going to be that car so I can get in that lane. So, so, it, it, so that it grows organically, to borrow the term. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's rare that it would just happen overnight, just in practice. Yeah. And the fact that it's expensive and then maybe gets less expensive later, that's a natural arc of technology. I'm old enough to remember seeing the movie Wall Street the original one with Michael Douglas and um, <laughs> Jerry, could you look that uh, up? Charlie Sheen, Sheen. Michael Charlie Douglas, Sheen, and Charlie Sheen. Thank you, of course. Yeah, Charlie Sheen. I just watched that last night. 1987. Yeah, exactly. Who doesn't? Okay. Who doesn't so remember I remember that? watching Gecko at his fancy beach house in the Hamptons, talking to Buddy, who is uh, um, Charlie Sheen's character. On a shoulder-mounted cell phone. Wow, shoulder-mounted. Okay, it was mounted. <laughs> okay, it was shoulder, and he's walking the beach with no wires. And I thought to myself, "Wow, <laughs> I wish I were that rich so I can use that phone." I remembered thinking that you could probably buy it now. But here's here's <laughs> so the point is, any new technology is going to be expensive, and it's not going to work very well, and only rich people will have it. Yeah. Over time, it becomes commoditized. They don't make money selling it only to 30 billionaires. They make money selling it to everyone. Yeah. Flat panel TVs, when they came out, were $10,000. Now they're an impulse item at, at Kmart, okay? <laughs> oh, it's 60 inch, let's just get your friend come and it's $600 or whatever they're costing. Yeah. So nobody today doesn't have a flat panel TV, even poor people. Okay. Yeah. It's full color, Good, everything. Goodwill doesn't even take like plasma or right, uh, right, right exactly. Projection TVs it, anymore. Exa- as in, for example, so there is a natural arc where it becomes cheaper, smaller, faster, better, and by the time it's ready for the masses, oh, no. it's it's a perfected technology. 